Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now NHL, local experts on the biggest stories on the ice. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We've got all of our Locked On NHL hosts here to recap everything from Thursday. We will start out with the Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wilds, who played a great game that went into overtime in our biggest game. The Biggest Game. The Minnesota Wild survived that trip to Dallas by taking a 3-2 overtime win out of Texas on Thursday. Our Locked On Wild has the names you need to know out of the box score in the win. Fiala, Flurry, and Freddy Goudreau is a heck of a three-headed monster. Hey everybody, Seth Topol, host of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, recapping a 3-2 overtime win for the Minnesota Wild in Dallas against the Stars. Wild got the first goal of the game thanks to Kevin Fiala, who is on what I'm going to call an e-leader because heater just is not strong enough of a word. They also got a shorthanded goal from Fiala to make it 2-1 to one at the time. Jason Robertson also scored twice for the Stars. Wild survived a flurry in the third period, pun fully intended because Mark andre Fleury was on his game all night long. And Freddie Goudreau scores in overtime to give the Wild the two points and the win. Some numbers to take into consideration for this game. The Minnesota Wilds now with a new franchise record for goals in a single season. Thanks to Fiala, who also is on a 25 goals in his last 48 games stretch here for the Wild. And uh, despite a little bit of a quiet night from Kirill Kaprizov, Wild absolutely got it done. And uh, they take a huge two points on the road against the Stars. With a big game against St. Louis coming up, love to see it. For more on the Minnesota Wild, make sure you're following Locked on Wild wherever you listen to podcasts. Dallas ended up getting a point out of the matchup, but the Stars fell at home in a game that our Locked on Stars host feels they should have won. The Dallas Stars are able to get a point out of their matchup with the Minnesota Wild, but ultimately should have had two. Hey, everybody, Dane Lewis here with the Locked On Stars podcast coming to you after the Dallas Stars overtime defeat at the hands of the Minnesota Wild. The season series split two to two between these two teams, and this was another all-time thrilling game between these teams. A little bit more low scoring, but all-time in the sense that it was physical, it was competitive, uh, guys were getting after each other, and there were some really great plays made by a lot of great players. Kevin Fiala has a big night for the Wild, scoring in the first period to put the Wild up 1-0, and scoring a shorthanded goal on one of the many Stars power plays throughout the game. And uh, if you ask me, that ends up being the big difference maker in this game because Dallas had done really well on their first power play, getting Jason Robertson to score a goal there to put the Stars back into the game, tying the game up, and then it looked like they had an opportunity to maybe get something going on their second man advantage, but it just was not meant to be, and Fiala gets the goal. Uh, Jason Robertson eventually does tie things back up, um, but, you know, the Stars just had a difficult time trying to read Marc-Andre Fleury all night. He played a great game. Scott Wedgwood played pretty well himself, but then ultimately gets beat in overtime, but this is still a big game because the Stars do claim one point, and they now are tied with the Nashville Predators for that top wildcard spot in the Western Conference, and it looks like the Vegas Golden Knights are going to beat the Calgary Flames, and so the Stars do help distance themselves just a little bit with one point uh, to try to stay ahead of Vegas, and they're right there in the thick of things with Nashville for a a chance to play Calgary in the first round over Colorado, but we will talk about this game in its entirety on Friday's episode of Locked on Stars. I can't wait to see you there. Alex Nedeljkovic used to play for the Carolina Hurricanes. Yesterday, he stopped 46 of their shots while wearing his new uniform for the Red Wings. After a bit of revenge, Locked On Red Wings recaps the victory. Oh, man. the uh, <laughs> That was the Alex Nedeljkovic game right there uh, against the team that traded him away in the third matchup and final matchup against that team this season. Alex Nedeljkovic posted a 46-save shutout against the Carolina Hurricanes to lead the Red Wings to a 3 to nothing victory. This was the Nedeljkovic game. This was the Alex Nedeljkovic we had seen all season long, the guy who can put the team on his back to win games. This man has the makings to be the goaltender of the future of the Detroit Red Wings, and he made 14 saves in high-danger situations This in this game alone, all situations considered. He was absolutely amazing. Just complete domination 
from the crease. And then, of course, you know, Moritz Sider, the favorite to win the Calder, had a nice power play goal off a beautiful high IQ pass from Dylan Larkin. Drop pass, no look. Just th- that when this team is performing well, this team is so fun to watch and the future is so bright. Also, a couple, a goal from Ernie and Philip Zanini gets his 10th of the season. But guys, this was the Alex Nelkovic game and this was, it's going to be the Alex Nelkovic episode of Lockdown Red Wings. So make sure you stay tuned. The Anaheim Ducks lost another one in overtime, the second straight game. But our Locked On Ducks host says this one was more than just the result. He explains. The Ducks lose their second consecutive game in overtime in the state of Florida. But that's not what the game was all about. It was all about Corey Perry and Ryan Getzloff together one final time out on the ice. Hi, everyone. J.D. Hernandez here from Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Well, it was another tough overtime loss. The Tampa Bay Lightning, the back-to-back cup champions, defeated the Anaheim Ducks in overtime 4-3. And it appeared that the game was over a minute into overtime because it appeared that Alex Kalorn scored the game-winning goal in overtime. But that goal was overturned by offsides. Of course, it did end a little bit later in overtime. Oh, yippee. Yeah, it ended later in overtime because Anthony Sorelli scored his 16th of the season. Again, the Ducks blew another late lead. Nikita Kucherov got the tying marker with about 12 seconds left. So, same story again. Ducks blow a lead late. They lose in overtime. They get a point, but they're out of the playoffs. So what does a point matter? What really matters is seeing Corey Perry and Ryan Getzloff, teammates for 14 seasons, out on the ice together one final time. The nice little cherry on top was seeing Ryan Getzloff and Corey Perry taking the opening faceoff to start the game. That was really cool. Seeing how those two love and respect each other before, during, and even after the game. That was incredible. The really piece de resistance was seeing the entire Tampa Bay Lightning team go over and shake Ryan Getzloff's hand as he exited the ice. The future Hall of Famer has only a few games left in his illustrious career. Oh, and by the way, Ryan Getzloff had two points on that game. Two assists, bringing his career points total to 1,015. Oh, wait. 10 15. Hmm. Whose numbers are those? Tune into Locked on Anaheim Ducks tomorrow for more on this thrilling game in Florida. The reigning champs are back in the playoffs after beating the Ducks last night, but it could have been a lot easier for Tampa Bay than they made it for themselves. Locked on Lightning tells you how Tampa held off Anaheim late to get that win. On a night where the Lightning just needed one point to clinch a playoff berth, they had to make things interesting. First of all, jumping out to a 2-0 lead against the Anaheim Ducks, only to give it up, give up three straight goals en route to Andre Vasilevsky getting pulled from the game and what was an absolutely shocking, shocking move by Coach John Cooper. But Brian Elliott, the backup, came into the game, shut the door, setting up the sta- setting up the stage for Nikita Kutrov to score the game tying goal all the way to an Anthony Sorelli overtime game winning goal lightning bounce back from a previous tough loss and now they head into the latter parts of april only to see if they could keep this up what a fantastic performance all around as the lightning are officially back in the playoffs coming up the blackhawks snap their losing streak and the penguins are in the playoffs this is locked on now nhl this edition of Locked On Now is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one spot for all of your online sports gambling needs. Definitely want to head over there now with baseball underway and, of course, the NBA playoffs in the mix and the NHL heading to the postseason in a couple of weeks. Just head over to betonline.net. Welcome back to Locked On Now NHL. I'm Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Let's continue our look around the league with our Locked On local experts. Let's go around the league. With a loss to the Blackhawks last night, the Sharks were officially eliminated from the playoffs. Not a huge surprise for San Jose fans at this point in the season. Locked on Sharks looks back at the year and the hopes for the postseason officially disappearing. 
The San Jose Sharks are officially eliminated from the playoffs. I'm J.D. Young of Locked On Sharks. The Sharks fall 5-4 to four in a shootout to the Blackhawks. Uh, with this loss, the Sharks are officially, officially eliminated from the, the playoffs. But um, Sharks crawled back into this game. Um, you know, it was they, they got some secondary scoring. They got from Balsers. They got Scott Reedy, Magna scoring. But... Uh, again, they just can't get enough, uh, either if they get some scoring, but they can't get enough goaltending or enough defense as they lose now their eighth in a row. So we'll have a full reaction to tonight's game. Of course, talk about Bordelow's debut with the Barracuda. Uh, so make sure you guys subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, check us out on YouTube as well. The Blackhawks had dropped eight in a row and had enough of it by the time Chicago got to the shootout with the Sharks last night. Locked on Blackhawks tells you how Chicago got back in the win column. Blackhawks win 5-4 to four in a shootout against the San Jose Sharks, snapping their eight-game losing skid, but more importantly, sending the Hall of Fame broadcaster Pat Foley off on a high note. What's up, everyone? This is Jack Bushman from Lockdown Blackhawks. Tonight, a really fun back-and-forth game at the United Center between the Hawks and the Sharks, two teams who have no playoff implications whatsoever, but they put together a very fun one here at the UC Each time the Blackhawks scored, the Sharks would answer right back. The game wound up going to a shootout. Alex DeBrinkett netted the lone goal in the shootout, and Kevin Lankinen made all three saves to secure the victory for the Blackhawks. The game really didn't mean all that much, but it was very awesome to send out Pat Foley with a victory. And it was awesome, per usual, by the Hawks. They do such a good job with the ceremonies and celebrations. They had a couple of special guest speakers on the Jumbotron talk about Pat Foley's career and how fantastic of a job that he's done. It was just all in all a very good night, and there have been few and far between of those at the UC this season. So to get a victory for Pat Foley, I mean, that was everything. Pat, from... Blackhawks fans all around the world, one last time, thank you for all you've done. You've been the voice of the Blackhawks for nearly 40 years. Most of us don't know anything else besides your voice behind the call, so it's going to be a little bit weird going forward, but I'm just very glad that the Blackhawks got this victory tonight for the Hall of Fame broadcaster, Pat Foley. For more on this victory by the Blackhawks, be sure to tune in tomorrow's episode of Locked On Blackhawks, your team every day. The chances were there for the New York Islanders to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins last night, but New York didn't do anything to earn it. Locked on Islanders labored through the long list of mistakes. Gil Martin of Locked on Islanders here. Islanders fall to the Pittsburgh Penguins in a game they really maybe could have won, but didn't deserve to win. Two key factors. Number one, whenever the Islanders made a mistake, it ended up in the back of the net. Ross Johnston not able to keep the puck in at the blue line a breakaway or an odd man rush the other way, goal. You had another play by Noah Dobson, turns it over in the neutral zone, goes back the other way, goal. The Islanders allowed a two-on-none breakaway in this game. Just too many sloppy plays to get the win. And then the other failure, the power play. 0 for 5 in this game. Had the Islanders converted on just one of those power plays, the dynamics in this one would have been different. Not a great game for Ilya Sorokin either. When you add it all up, it's just too much to overcome and the Islanders fall. They'll have two chances to make up for it this weekend. For more, listen to the Locked On Islanders podcast with me, Gil Martin, wherever you get podcasts. The Penguins clinched their playoff spot with still a few weeks left to go in the season by beating the Islanders last night. Locked On Penguins is happy to remind you that doing so has become the norm in Pittsburgh. 16 straight playoff appearances for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Hey everyone, I'm Hunter Hodes here with the Locked on Penguins podcast back with another Locked on Now video as the Pittsburgh Penguins have clinched their spot in the Stanley Cup playoffs that are set to begin in just a few weeks. We still don't know who their opponent is going to be yet, but they beat the New York Islanders 6-3 to tonight. Any regulation win or any win in general was going to clinch the Penguins a playoff spot and they did just that tonight, Jake Gensel was closing in on 40 goals. You probably will hit that over the team's last six games. And you know, this was a, a much better bounce back game, I thought, 
from the Penguins. They lost that game against the Islanders on Tuesday, 5-4 to four in a shootout. This one, they jumped on them a little early, go up 2 nothing in the second period. Let's go up 3-1 to one in the third, even though they didn't have a good second period, but then played a really solid third period, and they're able to get the two points. The Penguins are also five points up on the Washington Capitals for third place in the Metropolitan Division. Next up for the Penguins is a date at the Boston Ruins on Saturday afternoon at 12.30. But 16 straight playoff appearances, that is the longest active streak in North American sports right now. For more on the Pittsburgh Penguins, you can check out the Lockdown Penguins podcast wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Now NHL. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you check out Locked On NHL and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Now.